This is the ubiquitous K40 laser cutter. It's the epitome of cheap Chinese manufacturing, cheap enough to risk it and just expensive enough to warrant some confidence. It is the go-to laser cutter slash engraver for makers on a budget, not only for its price but also for the community behind it, which is very important considering that it's up to you to finish the manufacturing and to protect yourself from accidental fires due to poor wiring. The manufacturer made quite a few compromises to make a machine this cheap. While some design choices were rather smart, many were, to put it lightly, hasty or desperate. So it's very common to see upgrades online that tries to fix these poor choices. This video is the start of the series of videos where we will make incremental upgrades to this laser cutter until we have fixed most, if not all, the common issues it came with. Among many of the issues common with this machine, I find the extraction system to be very frustrating. It is probably because it threw a bathroom extractor on the box to be used as a smoke extractor. And since this machine is not exactly a bathroom, then it's not surprising it severely underperforms. So I decided to start here because of that and also because I already had all the parts I needed laying around. Let's start by pointing out the issues of this extraction system first. The extractor fit is too loose. The manufacturer employed a slitting system that allows us to quickly install and remove the extractor when needed. This, however, caused the fit to be excessively loose. The extractor sucks some air from the sides, reducing the overall airflow across the bed and allows some smoke to leak into the room. The extractor is too big. The base plate is unnecessarily big. This block access to the tube chamber and requires us to unmount every time we want to look at the tube. The extractor is not powerful enough. This causes the airflow to become slow at the front end of the machine. There are a ton of ways we can solve all of these issues. And if that's all we care about, then any solution that fixes the problem is a good solution. But we know that some solutions are better than others. In order to constrain the problem further, let's consider some design aspects that our exhaust system should have in addition of the fixes from before. Quick mounting and dismounting. The exhaust should be easily installed and removed without compromising the air tightness. Adjustable speed. This will allow us to regulate the speed to reduce noise production. Let's select a fan. The best way to move air through a flexible duct is an inline blower. This is mainly because flexible ducts create significant pressure drop that needs to be overcome and inline blowers sustain a bigger static pressure than regular fans. That means that for the same airflow, regular actual fans need more power and generate more noise than inline blowers. For short segments of flex duct, the dropping pressure is rather small and not a deal breaker. While all of this is true, I went with a 120mm computer fan that the seller claims to be very powerful. According to the seller, this is a 12 volt 3.9 amps axle fan, capable of up to 252 CFM or 7.16 meter cube per minute, 1.41 inches of water or 35.88 millimeter of water of static pressure, runs at 4,800 RPMs with a tachometer and pulse wind modulation control, and generates 65 decibel of noise. It sells for about $20, which is good for the specs. I tested the current drive with my incredibly unscientific power supply, and it registered about 2.71 amps, which is way out of spec. Don't be surprised if all of these specs are off. I'm still using this fan mostly because I already had it from a university project that I sadly didn't document it enough. Only this picture. It is often recommended that you should install the fan or blower at the end of the flexible duct where the small exhausts. There are multiple advantages of this approach. Maintaining negative pressure on the duct is preferable practice when exhausting gases. Also, the noise will be further apart from the operator and some claim that fans are burning and pulling air than pushing air. Citation needed. But it's a huge inconvenience because firing the fan that far away from the machine requires you to install longer cable and that can get messy fast. Even with all of these advantages, I chose to place a fan right at the exhaust hole of the machine, mainly because of the compactness and because it's easily reachable. So far, we've been ignoring the optimal design in favor for an easier compact design. This doesn't mean that our design so far is wrong, it only means that the design is somewhat inefficient in some ways, and that's a compromise I am willing to live with, making it a better design, even if it's an inefficient design. 
After taking some measurements and making some drawings of what we want, we can start making a 3D model of all the parts that needed printing. The first part we are designing is the shroud or diffuser that adapts a 120mm fan intake to the rectangular outlet of the machine. My first approach was using some bungee cord to clamp the diffuser over the hole. I started by drawing some profile in Fusion 360 and using the left command to make the transition between both geometries and that worked very well. I made some holes for the screws that would clamp the whole assembly together and some tabs for the bungee to rest in. I exported the STL file and printed the part using the following parameters that I figured had just enough strength for this application. After a few hours of printing, I removed all the support material and made a quick examination of the print to conclude that everything went as expected. The fit between the fan and the shroud was good and it fitted the machine the way I intended. Using some foam core, I made a quick outline of the silhouette of the end of the shroud that met the machine, to be cut and used as a support piece. This restricts the movement of the shroud and serves a double purpose in aiding the quick installation and removal of the assembly. Using some bungee, I proceeded to install the part, just to realize that there is no way for this bungee to provide enough force to clamp the shroud in place, I had to redesign. My next approach was to make the shroud fit inside the outlet of the machine and using some tabs to prevent the assembly from falling over. I modified the design to use four smaller tabs instead of two big ones to hold itself and made the shroud smaller to make it fit inside the rectangular hole, printed clean and mounted a fan to it. Sadly, the mating piece of the shroud was a tad bigger than I expected, so I had to iterate again. After the appropriate modification to the sketch, the whole design adjusted itself automatically. This is the biggest advantage of timeline-based 3D modeling. This time the piece fitted nicely to the machine. It held the weight of the fan with no problem and it was easily installed and removed. The 3D model can be found in the project page linked in the description. Now we need to design the part that connects the flex duct to the fan. This part is more complex because we need to make a shroud that will adapt both geometries while also making the smoke take a 90 degree turn and exit to the side of the machine. This is to make it compact and easier to install and uninstall. Again, I made a lap from a square hole to a circular hole, then connected that part with a sweep of a circle that went around a quarter turn. This is the model I ended up with. It's significantly bigger than the other shroud and way harder to print because of the amount of support materials needed. I exported and printed the model which lasted 7 hours using the same settings as before. The print turned out ok and thankfully the support materials were easy to remove. The part fitted nicely with the assembly and it made it correctly with the flex duct. Again, you can find the model on the project page. I installed the whole assembly on the machine and hold itself well. Immediately after powering up, the noise was indeed loud, but also muffled by the duct. This made it noticeably quieter than running the fan alone. I made some very rudimentary experiment comparing both extractor. And unsurprisingly, this 3D printed extractor outperformed the bathroom extractor the machine came with, but not by a lot. Looking back at our goals we set for this mod, we already made some good progress, we're only missing one goal and that's speed adjustability. Luckily for us, this fan comes with PWM control. To test this control signal, I set up a breadboard with an Arduino Nano and a putting showmeter connected to the analog A0. The potentiometer position gets read by the Arduino, gets mapped to the PWM range of the Arduino and outputs a PWM signal to the fan. I also added a pull down resistor to the PWM pin in the fan to avoid starting at full speed when the Arduino is booting. This is a code I use, you can find it on the project page. Experimenting with the setup, I noticed that the fan shuts down when the PWM signal is low enough. The fan will take a while before turning it on again once the signal is present. It seems that the fan needs to operate at a minimum speed to avoid a shutdown. Perhaps we can fool the tachymeter in software, I haven't found a good solution for this. Moving on, I proceeded to install the fan and the experimental circuit to the machine and power it up using my sketchy power supply. The fan seemed to run just fine and it regulated its speed just like on the bench. From previous experience, I remember that rastering images generates a ton of smoke, 
so I loaded a file I've used before to K40 Whisper. I placed a piece of cardstock on the bed and set the power to 20%. This percentage might not mean anything at all, and the speed to 200%, and began the raster. This machine is not terribly fast unlike others, but hey, you get what you pay for. The whole operation lasted about 11 minutes give or take. After it was done, I examined the results. Since we don't have a reference to compare it to, it was clear that a test with the old extraction system was necessary. So I set up the machine with the old extractor and rastered the same image with the same parameters. After a few minutes, the machine was finished. Comparing both results, it was clear that the changes were not that significant in this case. Both extractors caused sharing in the car stock at the same place, and it seemed like the old extractor caused less. Although in this clip it's hard to see, the smoke generated with the old extractor was thicker than the smoke generated with the new system. This is probably because the old extractor pulled less air in and it allowed smoke to thicken up before it was extracted. Different materials with different operations will give different results, and car stock is the only material I had right now. Time will tell if this new extractor is any better than the old bathroom extractor. And when I finally gather enough data to show, I will surely share it in a follow-up video, maybe in a version 2. To wrap this project up, I made a small board with some Vera board. It contained everything it was on the breadboard plus a voltage regulator to transform it from 12 volt to 5 volt. This is to power the whole extraction system with a single 12 volt supply. To make it prettier, I designed a small enclosure in Fusion 360 and printed it on my 3D printer. The power is delivered by a barrel jack glued on the enclosure. Installing the assemble back in the machine completes this project. Looking back, we managed to keep all the design goals for this particular hack for the K40 laser cutter. But we are not done yet with this machine, we still have a lot to fix. The project page of this video is linked in the description, where you'll find code, models, and high-definition images of the whole process. If you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for the next episode in this series. Feel free to check out my other series, where we are building a Wi-Fi-enabled visual doorbell system. The next episode will be out soon, and I'll see you then.